what happens to your brain when you have been affected by toxic relationships, narcissistic people, gaslighting, manipulation, and other forms of emotional turmoil in your life that causes high levels of cortisol, high levels of stress, and how that affects you physically in your brain. My name is Lise Colucci and I am your life coach here to help you understand and heal from narcissistic people and toxic relationships. So, okay, when you're under stress from a toxic relationship, let's just say if you're in a toxic relationship, you're under stress. There's kind of no way around it. You cannot have a healthy relationship with a toxic person because the relationship itself is polluted by the toxicity of how that person interacts in the relationship. So even the things you're doing may not be necessarily what you would do in a healthy relationship, which means the whole relationship itself is toxic. And what happens to someone when they live in that kind of condition, especially when they are the one being devalued and criticized and gaslit, they get stressed. You get stressed, okay? And that stress causes all kinds of physiological changes in your body. One thing that happens, the cortisol levels in your body rise, okay? That causes all kinds of things, including inflammation. Inflammation is like all over. It is widespread. It's not just like, oh, my leg is swollen. No, it's everywhere. It's every cell of your body. It's your nerves. It's all of it. Everything is getting pressure and inflammation from these high levels of stress hormones, okay? And from the repeated interactions with toxic people, those stress hormones never have a chance to level off and settle down, okay? No matter how much mindfulness you practice, if you are under constant barrage of toxicity, your cortisol levels are going to remain elevated. What happens in the brain when there is inflammation, when there is stress, when there is confusion and basically someone messing with your mind is there's a cognitive decline because there's an actual shrinking of the hippocampus and a swelling of the amygdala. Now the amygdala is responsible for the fight flight, okay? So when it is swollen, overactive, and highly activated, it becomes the first neural pathway that's hit when you have a stress. So you can have any trigger and immediately and instantly that trigger goes straight to the amygdala and you lose the ability to know whether something is danger or perceived danger. Everything starts to feel triggering and you go into fight flight, which means your logic center is a little shut down for a little while until that settles. It can cause memory loss, chronic stress. These are some of the things that happen when we have CPTSD from toxic relationships. So long-term emotional abuse will cause more damage. Because see, it's not like this thing happens and then it happened and then it's done. This thing is happening and happening over and over and over throughout time. And it is just increasing the level of damage that's happening in our brains. So there were two studies. One was out of New University of New Orleans and one was out of Stanford. And they both showed that people who have the greatest number of PTSD symptoms also had the greatest decrease of hippocampal volume over time. So basically, the more stress they had, the more shrunk that part of their brain has become, the more atrophied. The hippocampus is in the temporal lobe of your brain. It stores your memories. It is vital for short-term memory and for retaining information. So you can see why brain fog would be a totally common thing to feel and to experience when you have CPTSD. So not only does the amygdala, like we talked about earlier, control the fight flight, but it also controls things like breathing, your heart rate, and basic emotions like love, hate, fear, and lust. Now, imagine if that part of the brain is where the feelings of love are stemming from, and you have trauma and stress and fear, and the images of everything that's happening in the relationship and the reminders and the sounds and all of that in the same part of the brain, you can see how trauma bonding is actually a physiological response to the manipulation and the intermittent reinforcement of a narcissistic person or any toxic person. That's why even like subliminal hints will trigger you. Even after 
the person's gone, you've left, your years down the line and you're still feeling triggered, this is why. That part of the brain has become highly active and it you've lost the ability to have the difference to know the difference between perceived danger and actual danger. They get mixed together, right? And then you keep continuing with the triggers. And we're pretty creative, you guys. We find ways to deal with this. We disassociate we check out, we compartmentalize, we shut off the emotions, we become hyper emotional. We start projecting in different ways the things we're feeling so that we don't have to feel them, right? And so those are all adaptive skills that we've learned to help ourselves when, we've been, when we're in this situation and when like our brain has gone one way and so we're trying to rebalance it through all these coping skills, okay? Some of them are highly functional, highly useful. Compartmentalization, heck yeah, all day long, right? Until you need to have a feeling, until you realize that those compartments actually go together and they all start opening at once and you get flooded with the feelings and the experiences and the memories and the triggers. So real quick here, let's talk about what you can do. First of all, get support. If you need coaching or group coaching, as always, check out the information in the main description of every video. Find yourself a therapist if you need it to do deeper work on your psychology and on healing from these toxic relationships from a therapeutic level, okay? A therapist can guide you through EMDR. They can do talk therapy. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do in therapy. We'll go through them in just a second. Some of the things you can do for yourself, okay? If you can't afford or do not wish to speak to somebody else. Meditation. You guys, I know. It sounds ridiculous. You just sit quiet and think about nothing and be present. Uh, what's that actually gonna do? What that actually will do is it will teach your brain to do it differently. Over time and with repetition, it will start creating new neural pathways that teach your brain to calm down instead of going into activation, okay? Being present and being in the moment shows you that there is no danger right here, right now, as long as that's true for you, okay? If you are sitting quiet and practicing mindfulness in a place that is safe for you, it is true that in that moment you are not needing to be activated. You are not needing to, you know, to have all of these, all of these expressions of fear and all of that, okay? And so if you teach yourself that there are points in time that that isn't happening, your brain doesn't need to stay in constant hypervigilance. All right, and it takes time, it takes practice. So stick with it, do the meditations. I like the self-hypnosis as well for that and see what that does for you. Gratitude, practicing gratitude, being grateful. Sounds weird, but if you can start finding moments that things are okay, that you are grateful for, your brain learns that, oh yeah, that's right. There's other things in life besides this. Okay, and then you are instilled with a sort of feeling of worth, feeling of okayness, all right? And hopefully it can instill a bit of hope that there is something better past this toxic world that you've been in. Things like sound therapy, things like physical awareness of the body, somatic healing, that can be anything from just being aware of where the stresses lie in your body and trying to relax them to actually working therapeutically with someone to sort of release the things that are stuck in your cellular level, that are stuck on the cellular level in your body. You can do things like brain spotting with a therapist or a coach. EFT, there's aromatherapy, anything that helps your body, your mind, your emotions relax. Relaxing doesn't mean that the danger isn't going to be present later, okay? Relaxing means taking a break and allowing the body, the mind, the emotions, the soul to have some breathing room, to create some space for something different in your life, especially if you are out of these relationships we need to start creating that space so that your brain can have a chance to heal. Your brain can have a chance to have that hippocampus come back online a little more, to allow that amygdala to slow and settle down so that you're not in constant fight flight. Okay, so this is just a brief description and a brief introduction to healing from this particular thing that happens after toxic relationships and narcissistic abuse. 
Let me know what you think, you guys. Let me know what's helping you. If you need coaching or group coaching, like I said, check out the information in the main description and I will see you on the next video, okay? Take care.